What's going on everybody? This is Murder the Finish here and today we're going to be painting on a hood and a filler piece for a Ford truck. Um, before we do that I want to go over some other things. I want to take a minute and I want to talk about reducers. Um, it's very important that you use the right reducers and the right temperatures to get the best results. Um, if you're using a fast reducer on a silver on a hot day it's going to dry too quick. It's going to sand pile they call it. So you want to make sure that you're using the proper reducers for the proper temperature and the proper humidity. Humidity is a big factor where I'm at. Um, so yeah, here we'll just turn around we're gonna talk about the different reducers that PPG offers for the DT reducers. Okay, so for Deltron, this is the recommended reducers that you use in it. Um, I know a lot of other guys can use Shopline. I don't really notice too much of a difference other than you have a variety with the DT reducers. So right here, this is a fast reducer. This is DT885, and what this is supposed to be for is up to 85 degrees is what this is good to spray at. In my experience, PPG lied, <laughs> because unless it's 70 degrees, 72, 73, you know, your metallics are gonna act funny. And uh, a lot of times, this is my go-to reducer right here. This is up to 95, it's a DT895, and I use this most of the time. And uh, when you get these hot, humid days, I uh, usually will cocktail this and this. This is DT8898, excuse me. And I usually cocktail these two together. And if if we were in a nice, hot, dry temperature type of deal, low humidity, no humidity, like out in Arizona or you know somewhere more desert climate, this is what they use out there. Um, unfortunately, for the humidity, even if it is you know, 95, 100 degrees. Uh, if you just do straight 98, the all of it will wash out. It'll look funny. Um, the metallics won't orientate correctly. So this is what I do. Usually I'll go half and half with my reducers when it's like a hot, humid day like it is today. And I usually make out pretty good. The metallics lay out good. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to give everybody a little look about what different reducers there is for Deltron. If you're watching my channel right now and you're not subscribed, I just want you to go over and hit that subscribe button real quick. It really helps the algorithm push my channel a lot harder. And uh, hey, while you're there, find a video you like, hit the like button, hit the share button, you know, spread the word. You know, we do this channel because I want to help painters out there that are just starting out. Um, you know, I have bigger plans in the future for everything. So thanks a lot, everybody. Enjoy. Okay, everybody. Well, I just want to give everybody a little example about using the proper reducers. So right now we're mixing up sealer. So our sealer mixes up three to one to one. So that's three parts sealer, one part hardener, one part reducer. And this is pretty important too. If you get the wrong reducer in it, then it'll go on too dry or you'll be tr trying to put it on too wet, end up running it, and then you're waiting forever to sand the run out. So it's just really important that you make sure to keep that sealer wet, but not running it on the floor. It's three to one to one. So this is the hardener, it's DCX3030. And it's probably sufficient enough for me to just use 95. go. That's how we mix up the dealer. Go to paint. Alright guys, got her all tacked off. Loving this new wand. Got her all ready to rock and roll.
Okay guys, so we're here, we're mixing up some base coat. This paint coat is called N1, it's called Blue Jeans. It's got a very high metallic in it for being just a blue. A lot of silver. So we gotta make sure that our metallics are gonna orientate correct. So the way we're gonna do that, this base coat mixes up one to one. Make sure it's stirred really good. So that mixes up one to one. So that's one part paint, one part reducer. I'm gonna pour whatever we got left in this can so we need it on this hood. I have a little tiny bit left over from when I painted the rest of it yesterday. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take our 95. We're gonna put, so we need to go up to almost 16. So do about half. Maybe a little more. It's not that hot today. And then we're going to put a little bit of 98 as well and cocktail them together. Not quite to 16. What that's going to do is it's going to let the metallics flow and not just dry as soon as they hit the panel and start sand piling. Make sure we stir this up pretty good. And shake it too. Always want to make sure we're straining our paint. Especially me because I get all my paint from the paint store. And who knows how long their toners have been sitting on the shelves. I know the one guy is pretty good about it. The other place not so much. I don't want to make sure because what we're going to do here. So the metallics don't build up into the filter. On our PPF cup. Take that guy right out of there. And we just make sure we're shaking it in between and making sure we're all good. Oh yeah, I was gonna add the rest of that. Ah, uh, maybe I'll have enough. All right, guys, that's how you mix up your base coat. Depending on how it is and how humid it is. Man, is it humid. It rained all night, and now it's just starting to warm up. But it's not enough to burn off all the humidity, so. All right. This is what I'm talking about with this humidity today. Even with 95 and it, it is having a hard time drying. But like I said, it's a catch-22 if you don't. And you put 85 degree reducer in it, then you're going to be too dry. So just got to get this a little bit longer to flash off. We'll be right back. All right, now we're nice and flashed off. Now we can put some base down.
want everybody to look and see how nice and wet it is still. Gives that time to orientate. And when we come back in, all the metallic should be laying pretty proper. Again, if I would have sprayed that with 85 reducer, we would have been fighting with it to get it wet enough to be able to lay right. So, just a tip from the pros. All right, dried down pretty good. Uh, it's a little stripey. I'm gonna go the other way this time. guys that looks a heck of a lot better um, solvents are coming out of it now it's starting to dry a little bit uh, the humidity is really screwing with the metallics today it's something I fight on a daily basis and I'm sure a lot of people that are in high, high humidity environments do the same thing so uh, yeah no it's turning out okay so far though our last coat we're gonna back up we're gonna do a quick control coat and uh, then we'll get to clearing Pretty nice control coat. Let this flash off and it's time for clear. Now I do want to talk about reducer and clears. Some clear coats do require a reducer. Uh, the reducer, obviously it all depends on what environment you're springing in, same thing with everything else with the reducers. Uh, the particular uh, clear coat that I'm using today does not require a reducer or take one. So, uh, but one that I use quite a bit that does take a reducer is DC 2000. Like I said, you just got to make sure you're using the proper reducer for the proper temperature that you got. Um, sorry about that, guys. I'm just cleaning my gun out. Do a nice 
final clean at the end of the day today on all my guns. Yeah, here's that 2000. Don't have much left, but that does require a little bit of reducer. But our everyday go-to is 3000. Some guys like 4000. 3000 goes pretty good for what we use it for. That does not require a reducer. Well, that's about it on reducers, guys. Uh, stick around and watch me clear this thing. Son of a... Never fails on these humid days with these bugs, man. Got one in the hood over here. But anyway, 
Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you learned something about Reducer. If you did, I want you to go out and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and this has been Murder the Finish.